How are you guys doing? Today is Friday, December 10th, 2021. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to do an elite individual profile on Eddie Jackson. The elite starting free safety for the Chicago Bears turns 28, and my intention with this episode is, of course, to point out the stats and the statistics along with the accolades, the achievements, and the accomplishments that he's been able to uh, achieve from the moment that he first stepped foot into the public eye as a freshman at Alabama to where he is right now as a two-time pro bowler and as someone that has been recognized as one of the best players at his position if you're unfamiliar with eddie with eddie jackson at the moment uh he stands at about six feet tall he's about 204 pounds i would really describe his game as really a lot of just, just really being everywhere at once he defends a lot of passes at the same time he makes a lot of tackles and Without him in the secondary, I think that the Bears would not be as formidable as a defense. He most definitely, he has been used to really kind of blitz. And at the same time, they do definitely need him to, uh, to just play deep safety a lot. He is a very smart defensive player, of course, coming from the Alabama system that he came up in. And considering he was getting a lot of playing time as a younger player, I imagine that it was a lot more than just his physical and just his mental acuity, which has led to him being one of the best safeties in football. But I digress. Or just getting into the story of Eddie Jackson, he's originally out of Lauderdale Lakes, Florida. Uh, he, would, he would eventually find himself playing high school in Florida. And of course, knowing how big high school football is in Florida. Uh, I think it's a big surprise. It was a big surprise to many when he was actually recruited out of the state and he was recruited to go play corner at uh, Alabama. As a true freshman at Alabama, he actually will go on to play seven or he played six games. He started four games uh, in 2013 for an Alabama team that would eventually go on and finish with an 11 and two record. They made they finished with the eighth best record in the league as they ended up losing by two touchdowns in the Sugar Bowl to Oklahoma that season. But in the six games he played, he was able to finish with six or 19 total tackles on the year, even a tackle for loss. He even finished with an interception and even a fumble recovery in his 2013 season, as of course he wasn't. Uh, he, he was still trying to work his way into becoming a full time starter. Prior to his sophomore season, he actually tore his ACL, but he would go on to play in about nine of the games that he played. Uh, he played nine games in a 2014 season in which Alabama would finish with a 12-2 and record. At the conclusion of their season, they went on to lose to Ohio State by a touchdown in the Sugar Bowl for what was the the very first college football playoff semifinal that Alabama would actually compete in. In the season, in the nine games he played, he was able to finish with 37 losses. He had a tackle for a loss just like he did the previous year. He would record his only sack as an Alabama player his sophomore year as he also had an interception. He had six passes, defended a fumble recovery and a forced fumble as well at the end of that season following his second season at alabama he would come back for his junior season at alabama he would switch from california he would switch from cornerback to safety and in his first season as a safety he would start in all 15 of the games he played this is the only season in which he started every single game for alabama he did this in a season in which alabama would go on to win the national championship game after they beat michigan state 13 to nothing in the in the semifinal this is the year where they ended up beating Deshaun Watson the first time by five points in that season itself in the 15 games he played he finished with a career high 46 tackles that season he had three tackles for loss he had a career high six interceptions it was the only collegiate season in which he had more than one uh, he even took two of his interceptions to the house for pick sixes. Um, he would go on to force a fumble and recover a fumble as well, as he was a very big part of an Alabama defense that led to them eventually winning the championship. And following his junior season, he would come back for his senior and final season with the Alabama Crimson Tide. Um, he would go and play his first eight weeks until he would go on to break his left leg versus t um, Texas A&M. Um, but in the shortened season itself, in the eight games he played, he would finish with 55 or he would finish with a total of 24 tackles um, and he would have a 55 yard pick six. Um, as well on that season in that shortened season 
even though he didn't finish that season out with Alabama, they would go on to make it all the way to the National College Football Championship where they lost to Deshaun Watson by four points. And if Eddie Jackson had been there, that very well could have been a difference, but he wasn't. Um, following his four years at Alabama, Eddie Jackson would, of course, be taken. He was drafted in the 2017 draft. He was drafted with the 112th overall pick in the fourth round of the 2017 draft. And just for reference, looking at other players taken, Miles Garrett was the very first player taken in that draft jamal adams uh, who now plays for the seattle seahawks was the sixth overall pick in that draft and he was the very first safety selected other notable players in that first round include christian mccaffrey patrick mahomes marshawn Lattimore, deshaun watson marlon humphrey Jonathan Allen, who just made a Pro Bowl this year, Tredavious White, TJ Watt, all those players were taken in the first round of the 2017 draft. Eddie Jackson was among them. He was taken with the fourth, he was taken with the 112th overall pick in the 17th. Oh, blah, blah, blah. He was taken with the 112th overall pick. He was taken in the fourth round by the Chicago Bears. And ever since he's played with the Chicago Bears, he's actually started every single game. His rookie season came in his age 24 season in 2017. And in his rookie season, he would start all 16 of the games he played in a season in which the Bears would finish 5-11. and This was John Fox's last full season as the Bears uh, head coach. In that season, in his age 24 season, Eddie Jackson would finish with seven. 73 combined tackles on the year, which would be the second most he's ever put together in a season. He would finish, of course, with um, a, or he would finish alongside his 73 tackles. He would go on to finish with six passes defended. He would force a fumble and recover three. And in one game against Cam Newton in the Carolina Panthers, he would go on to pick up a scoop and score for his very first defensive touchdown of his NFL career. And in that very same game, Cam Newton would end up throwing a pick six uh, to, or it was intended to Kelvin Benjamin, but of course, Eddie Jackson would pick it off and that would be his very first career pick six. Following his rookie season, he wouldn't really, he wasn't necessarily named a pro bowler, but many people were starting to focus on Eddie Jackson as one of the very big, one of the reasons that the Bears uh, defense was doing pretty well, at least in the secondary. Following his very first season at Chicago, when many people were starting to become aware of him, and his, his second season would be his age 25 season in 2018. And in his second season, he would start all 14 of the games he played in a season where the Bears would go 12 and 4. And in addition to winning the AFC North in Matt Nagy's first season, Matt Nagy would win the coach of the year. Eddie Jackson would be named a pro bowler and he would be named first team all pro at the strong safety position in his lone year of starting at strong safety. In the 14 games that he started, he would finish with 51 tackles on the season, which is 22 less than his rookie season. However, he will go on to finish with six interceptions on the year, which is the most interceptions he's ever put together in a season. He would finish with two pick sixes for the entire season with interceptions against the Vikings and inters and an interception against the Lions. Those are the two picks that went to the house. He would go on to force two fumbles and recover another fumble as he would have yet another fumble recovery touchdown. He would have three defensive touchdowns in 2018. And of course, by the end of the year, being recognized as a first team as a first team safety in his second year of being a pro is, of course, a very big feat. Following that season, the Chicago Bears would make it to the playoffs and they would actually lose in their very first playoff game to the Eagles. They lost this game 16 to 15. And of course, just for uh, for context, this is the year in which the Rams would be the team out of the NFC and they ended up losing to the Patriots in Atlanta. Um, but of course, Following that season, this one transitioned into Eddie Jackson's third season with the Chicago Bears, his age 26 season in 2019. In that season, he would go on to start all 16 of the games that he played in a season where the Bears finished with an 8-8 eight and eight record and missed the playoffs in Matt Nagy's second season. Uh, in the 16 games that he played, though, he finished with 60 tackles, with nine more than he had the previous year. He had five tackles for loss, the most tackles for loss he's ever had in a season. He would go on to finish with two interceptions. He would also go on to force a fumble and recover a fumble as well. 
at the conclusion of the season, at the end of his third year, he would be named a Pro Bowler for the second time in his NFL career. He actually has not been named a Pro Bowler since 2019, but I mean, ever since then, it's really only been a full season. And after the Bears failed to miss the playoffs, this would transition into Eddie Jackson's fourth full season with the Chicago Bears, which would be his age 27 season with the Bears in 2020. This was the season that was impacted by COVID in the sense that fans were not necessarily allowed to be in the stands, but every team still played every single game that they were, that they were, they, they played all 16 games. And in the 16 games he played, he would start all of them in a season in which the Bears would finish with an 8-8 eight and eight record, um, the same record as they had the year before, but this time they had actually qualified for a wild card spot. In the regular season, Eddie Jackson finished with 82 combined tackles, the most tackles that he's ever been able to put together in a season. He was also able to add five passes defended as he, this is the very first season in his career, he was not able to post an interception. He also forced three fumbles and recovered a fumble recovery for a touchdown, his third fumble recovery touchdown and his sixth defensive touchdown in his fourth season in the NFL. And at the conclusion of the 2020 season, he was not necessarily named a pro bowler, but he was a big part of the Bears making or of, of the Bears at least trying to fight for their playoff lives in their lone playoff game in 2020, which was also simulcast on Nickelodeon, actually. They would end up losing that game 21 to 9 to the New Orleans Saints. And this the Saints would end up losing to the Buccaneers, who ended up taking home the last Super Bowl, which was Super Bowl 55 in Raymond James Stadium in their home stadium. So, of course, following this most recent full season, this transitions us to where we are right now, as Eddie Jackson is now in his fifth season with the Chicago Bears. Thus far, it seems as though he is still registering a lot of tackles. He's right now he has about 45 tackles on the season, uh, not to mention that he also forced a fumble as well. The Chicago Bears right now are sitting at four and eight as their playoff hopes are not looking very bright, especially considering they have to play against the Packers on Sunday. Um, but considering everything, it, I think that everything that I've mentioned about Eddie Jackson, I, I think speaks true to the type of player that he is a very dominant safety that is still perceived as one of the best safeties in football and recognized more than once as a pro bowler as one of the best at his position um the last year the last couple of years have been a little rough but i know that as long as he is on that bears defense that bears defense at least has something to worry about and i can't wait to see what happens over this next year with eddie jackson um, as he grows as a player First, I want to thank the College and Pro Football Reference websites, along with the NCAA and NFL websites that gave me all the facts and figures that I didn't get from those. And of course, if I want to thank everyone for listening to all 12, 13 minutes of this piece. If you ever get a chance to watch Eddie Jackson, I would. He's wearing number four for the Chicago Bears now that everybody in the NFL can wear whatever number they want. Um, but as long as that said, he is most definitely one of the players. And I think he's also one of those players where you have to hear what his opponents would have to say about him as a defender. I think that considering he has to play in the same division as Aaron Rodgers, I think that Aaron Rodgers, one of the most respected voices and opinions in sports, has a lot to say about how good Eddie Jackson is as a player. With that said, thanks for listening. I hope all is well, and I'll catch you with more after today's exhibitions and matchups are done. Thanks for listening to this piece and peace out. I'll catch you with more tomorrow.